But joining me right now is Missouri House Speaker Tim Jones. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, Dana. Thanks for having me on again. Of course. So what? where do we stand? What is the latest with this tax cut veto battle? Because I know that there, and we were naming them yesterday, uh, there were a number of Republicans who were actually kind of siding against Missouri families on this. Have you been able to win any back over to the side of common sense? Dana, I have specifically spoken to as many of the, uh, the people that we believe may be no votes. And we have picked up a couple of votes, Dana, but as you know, this has been an uphill battle from the very beginning because back in session, we only had 100 Republicans vote yes on this bill. That, that's, that's great. During a session, you only need 82. So having 100 is fantastic. But 109 is the magic number. It's always been an uphill climb. But Dana, you're correct. The left-wing regressives in this state have absolutely gone hysterical because, Dana, they, they know that they're really losing hold on Missouri. And so what do you do when you, you're losing hold and you're losing all the battles? You're losing elections year in and year out. You have super majorities of Republicans. You've got a great bench that's going to move up to statewide appeal in a couple of years. You fight harder and more shrilly, and you have no problem slinging mud and misrepresenting. And Jay Nixon has done nothing but fly around the state in his taxpayer-funded airplane all summer long campaigning against giving Missourians back some of their hard-earned money. Yeah. Ex- yeah, exactly. Well, there and there have been there's been so much misinformation about this as well uh, that, you know, you have individuals saying, oh, this is just going to absolutely um, this will kill education. And I, I've heard everything from, oh, bus rides will be longer. And, and, and but the thing is, is that and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Speaker, but the money is there. If Jay Nixon wanted to throw money towards education, the money already exists. He's just holding it. Dana, thank goodness there's people like you and others that we actually have um, that we actually have voices in the media that actually support common sense, fiscally conservative messages, and actually and actually are interested in telling the truth. And Dana, guess what? There were two there were two editorial boards in this state that actually have supported House Bill 253. I have to give huge props and thank you to the St. Joseph News Press and the Southeast Missourian. There are some honest brokers left in journalism in Missouri. There's only a few, but at least there's a few editorial boards that understand common sense. Dana, there's three points on this bill. Number one, less than a year ago, a supermajority of Missourians sent a supermajority of Republicans to the House and the Senate together for the first time in state history to do what? Reduce taxes, control government spending, limit government. Because, Dana, as you know, for every dollar you put into government, you take it out of the free market, you take it away from the people, take it out of job creation and true job investment. Dana, number two, back to your point you just made. Jane Nixon is the only elected public official in the state who has truly harmed education. And that's a fact. If you look back at the budgets that he's proposed or that he has tinkered with over the last five years, he is the one that has cut education and withheld money. And he just did it July 1st of this year. It is a disgrace and a shame that the media has ignored the crisis he created by withholding, unconstitutionally withholding, $400 million on the first day of the fiscal session and then threatening the education establishment that if they did not stand with him and regurgitate his talking points, he would not give them their money. Dana, that, that is horrible to use children as political pawns in this battle for good public policy. And one of the other, we had someone else call in about this uh, yesterday, which um, to me didn't make sense, especially in the context of this bill. Someone called in and said, oh, well, this is what this is going to do is is drastically increase taxes on prescription drugs. I've heard like a million different stories about prescription drugs. They don't even have the same talking points with this. Set this straight for, for those who may be unaware and who may be hearing some of these talking points coming out of the progressive chattering class. Absolute red herring. Uh, Number one, that was a drafting error in the bill, and guess where we got the language from, which makes me wonder, Dana, if the poison pill was inserted on purpose. The drafting came from Jay Nixon's Department of Revenue. How about that? Interesting. Yes, interesting. The language came from the Department of Revenue. They submitted that language on multiple bills for that streamlined sales tax bill, which, number two, is not going to go into effect because Congress is not going to pass it. And number three, it... uh, will not go into effect even if it were to pass until 2015. We have two legislative sessions to fix it. And number four, Jay Nixon would have to implement that policy. 
So just like he's doing with the withholding of the education dollars, Jay Nixon controls whether that red herring argument, which came from his people, would actually go into effect. It's a complete poison pill. They tried to certain the bill, and it will not take effect whatsoever. Interesting. Well, and this is something that I think Missourians are pretty much agreed with across the board, that they would like to keep more of their money. When you consider some of the stuff that this pres- uh, that this uh, governor, God heaven forbid, if he were to be president, uh, that if, if he were, that he, well, at first he, what did he, he vetoed the uh, unemployment insurance reforms that would have helped protect small business. Uh, yep. he's, there's a number of things that he's, re- he's really taken an anti-business stance on this stuff, which is why I found it so fascinating that he was so angry with Rick Perry when Perry came into Missouri and was just pointing out some of the problems with the policies implemented by this administration. I think he really got into Nixon's head. So I guess the question is why, you know, if Nixon desperately wants to be viewed as a moderate because he has greater ambition, then why he wouldn't get on board with something as sensible as this tax cut, which isn't it like just one percent? Uh, yes, Dana, it's a very modest, conservative with a small C approach to the first ever tax reform in Missouri in nearly 100 years. And Dana, I, we've all been, we've all, you ask a great question. We've all been speculating as to why this governor, who less than a year ago sounded like a Republican, if you remember all those campaign mm-hmm. commercials, the campaign commercials were, I'm very happy that I've held the line on taxes. I'm really happy I've worked with Republicans. I'm really happy that I've helped Missouri have a AAA bond rating and a, and a, and a true balanced budget. Suddenly, Jay Nixon is trying to re-earn his left-wing regressive stripes that he lost during the first four years when, Dana, honestly, most Democrats came up to me on the side and said, if you want him in your party, you can take him because he sure isn't acting like a Democrat. Well, Dana, he's got to re-earn those stripes because he is looking down the road. He is looking to do something later, obviously. This is political in nature only. Dana, he is very upset about some recent rankings that came out. They ranked 45 governors in the country. They didn't rank the five new ones that were just elected, but they ranked 45 governors on job creation and economic development. Jay Nixon came in 39th because he has no plan. Missouri is stuck at 48th in GDP growth, whereas governors in other states that are leading the nation, the top 10 states are being led in job creation are by Republican governors who are reducing taxation, reducing regulation, improving their litigation systems, and either are right-to-work states or moving in that direction. Jay Nixon approves of none of those reforms. He is the anti-jobs governor. Wow. And you're still looking at getting right-to-work somewhere on the floor at some point. I understand we have to get through this hurdle first, but is that still a a goal? I know we talked about this uh, not too long ago, and you said that at least before your term expired it was. Yes. You know, Dana, I, I think when you look at the states that have actually done it, it's embarrassing that Missouri has not. If Michigan can become a right-to-work state, if Wisconsin can become a right-to-work state, if Indiana can become a right-to-work state, Dana, as far as I know, the sky did not fall in those states. In fact, if you look at the data, they're creating jobs, and their economies are improving, and their budgets are growing. Jay Nixon, for some reason, wants to keep all the money and all the control with himself. I think I know why, Dana. He wants to expand government. He wants to massively expand all the entitlements that he has so he can give back to all the people that have supported him over the years. Uh, I think it's nothing but just just raw politics at best. He's a political beast. He's done very well in his career, being a chameleon to what, whichever winds are blowing at the time. Dana, Republicans support tax cuts because that's what Republicans do. And it'll be a real shame if some people stand in the way of this in our caucus. And Dana, they don't have to answer to me. They're going to have to answer to their constituents back home. Because those are the people that they told they want to go to Jefferson City and cut taxes and reduce government spending. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to be eagerly watching this fight as it unfolds and uh, putting pressure on these Republicans who have either been wobbly or deciding to stand with Nixon against uh, Missouri families. Missouri Speaker Tim Jones, as always, thank you, sir.